Now that the water is starting to recede in many areas, residents are getting their first good look at the devastation. Stay tuned, your news is next. With your total news coverage for Yakima and Kittitas Valleys, this is CAP 35 News at 5.30. Good evening. Welcome to CAP, Thurs Cap 35 News this Monday night. I'm Dana Cowley. Our top story tonight focuses on the first flood-related casualty. The accident happened last night near Marion Drain and Hera Road. Part of that road is completely washed away, but last night a car with three people in it ignored the road close sign. The car fell into the Marion Drain. Two people were able to get out safely, but the third person is still missing. One resident says there was not a barricade closer to the hole until today. There was no barricade there. Only down the road a mile they had road closed signs and somebody must have just been sightseeing. The Yakima County Search and Rescue Team has given up its search for that missing person for now. The water is running too swiftly and it's too dangerous for divers to go in. The name of the missing person hasn't been released yet. In other parts of the county, the enormous job of cleaning up is getting started. It's happening from one end of the county to the other. Our team coverage begins tonight in Toppenish, where Cat 35 Cindy Andrew reports residents there are rebounding after a dike broke this weekend, flooding that town. The Yakima River made it through the town of Toppenish on Saturday. The floodwaters affected the entire east side of town. My wash and dryer floating. Veronica Castaneda was evacuated from her home early Saturday morning. Since then, she has joined here. several other families staying at the Red Cross shelter at the Toppenish High School. She, along with many others, are wondering what's left of their homes. You know, just uh, things that you save up, memories, you know, they're not re replaceable. But one thing I do want to mention is, you know, I want to give thanks to the volunteers that were out there helping and the Red Cross. About 40 people stayed at the shelter last night. Volunteers say nearly 200 people have visited the shelter since Saturday. No one expected to be here. If we would have knew that it was going to happen before, we would have all been ready for it. You weren't ready for it this time? No, because we didn't know because it usually never floods you here. Okay. This is one of the few areas in town where you can still see water. There is still water in several basements, making it hazardous for people to return home. The mayor says this flood brought the community together. Well, the community is reacting just uh, beautifully. I mean, everybody, uh, you know, chipped in and did their share. The worst may not be over in the city of Tappanish. If there's any future precipitation or snow melt and the river rises, the dice just won't be able to take anymore, and the city will flood again. And I understand that they're going to be releasing that flood level from the reservoirs. That also is a slight concern to us. So the mayor and his staff are looking into the matter to try to make sure it doesn't flood again. In Toppenish, Cindy Andrew, CAP 35 News. Reporting in the Nile Valley, where for four days now, residents here have been cut off from the outside world. With Highway 410 washed out in several places, they've had to rely on helicopters, horses, and each other for supplies. It was kind of neat because nobody had any TV or no lights or anything, so yeah, we got to meet all our neighbors and kind of pulled our resources together and so that every, you know, so nobody did without anything that I know of. While some people living in the Nile community couldn't make it down Highway 410 toward Yakima, it worked both ways. Others couldn't make it back up to their homes. Still left out. <laughs> they won't let me in. Nothing I could do. Repair efforts are slowed by four major washouts and standing water that covers the road for almost a half a mile in some places. But help is coming from both directions. Almost 30 people contracted by the Department of Transportation are working to clear the road to the west, and another 30 in the Nile community are working toward the east. My understanding is people in the community, some of them are contractors themselves, but uh, some of them are the DOT uh, maintenance people also. And uh, they're kind of uh, hitting it up, but with the... Uh, uh, other people that live up there that have equipment, they're doing a lot of the work. The repair crews are hoping to meet in the middle in about three days, banding together to form at least a one-lane road that will give Nile Valley residents the freedom to come and go as they please. Julie Holland reporting, CAP 35 News. When the repair crews finally get the roads more accessible for up for daily traffic, cleanup in the Nile Valley will be a major project. Some houses were totally washed away. Others are still underwater. 
And if your phone is out due to the floods, chances are they won't be fixed for a few days. U.S. West has called in repair crews from outside to help, but they say the outages are going to last for about a week. The main areas U.S. West is working on are Gleed, Nash East Heights, Terrace Heights, and the Arcanum area. If you live outside those areas and you don't have phone service, call U.S. West. Their number is 1-800-545-9422. Many roads around this area are still closed due to the floods. We'll have a live update for you next on the closures. Plus, we're going to tell you how long it's going to take to repair the bridge linking Yakima Valley with Highway 12 up White Pass. You're listening on Yakima's oldie station, AM 1460 KMWX, Sports and Weather, up next. So what do you like about Eagle? They have 99% of anything you'd ever want. The 1% that they don't have, what would that be? Uh... Gosh, I don't know. I tried to get some... Oh, uh, they don't have hamburgers. They don't have hamburgers, <laughs> but Eagle has hot dogs with more of everything. Eagle Hardware and Garden. More of everything. Start saving money on fuel bills now. It's the perfect time to add a layer of easy-to-install CertainTe fiberglass insulation in your home. CertainTe at Eagle. From Morgan Jewelers during their Valentine's Day sale. It doesn't have to be expensive jewelry. Morgan's has a gigantic selection of Valentine's jewelry. Under $100. Fabulous diamonds, dazzling gold, sapphires, emeralds, and rubies. Like this beautiful diamond and created ruby jewelry. All under $100. For slightly more, Morgan Jewelers has beautiful gifts. Like this ring for $249. Charge it with Morgan's easy 5-minute credit programs. Women prefer jewelry. From Morgan Jewelers. Of course. Blyle Petroleum is more than just a farm service. Blyle is a full-service petroleum and propane supplier, serving your residential, commercial, and agricultural fuel needs. You can count on Blyle for quality products, competitive prices, professional service, equipment installation, and convenient delivery schedule. Call for information on our Rest Easy program. We schedule the fills on your tank automatically and save you time and worry. How about that? Call today and start enjoying Blyle quality service from Yakima to the Tri-Cities. Your total news coverage continues on Cat 35 News with Dana Cowley. People viewing the spectacle of the flooding are interfering with emergency efforts. Officers are asking not go look at the flooding and devastation. If you hamper efforts, you could be cited with a hefty fine. Officers are also telling you to obey the road closure signs at all costs. You see, it appears that disobeying a sign may have already cost one person's life. We're taking a look at 16th Avenue. Well, we don't have that tape for you, but they do say that's something we've got to watch out for and be very careful. Cap 35's Renee McCullough joins us now. She's been watching these road closures and found an area that's certainly damaged. It is, Dan, up there, the Natchez River Bridge, but in Natchez is just awful. You should see it. Yeah. It will be at least another week before people will be able to cross the bridge. The bridge is in such bad shape, the Department of Transportation is putting up a temporary bridge this week. By Wednesday, crews hope to start putting in a Bailey Bridge at the Y intersection on Highway 12. The Natchez River Bridge collapsed this weekend, leaving residents with no other way to get across the river. The Department of Transportation says it will be at least another week before this bridge is passable again, but they say they are making necessary accommodations for school children. We've talked with the parents. The parents will bring the kids down. We'll get the kids across. In the morning, uh, we'll st have staging in the afternoon to make sure we can get the kids safely across the bridge. Robert says they will let people walk across the bridge if absolutely necessary. He says they have transportation workers manning the road 24 hours a day until repairs are made. And those repairs are coming with a hefty price tag. The Bailey Bridge alone will cost about a quarter million dollars. That will include the setup cost, uh, the maintenance while it's up because it is, it, it will take some maintenance. We'll have to keep inspecting it all the time. And that's just the cost for the temporary bridge, which will only allow one-way traffic across the river. Robert says he has no idea 
how much the new replacement bridge will cost or when they'll have time to get it up. The temporary bridge is going to be open in about a week, but I guess what people really want to know is when will they have a permanent one in that they can feel a little more secure about. Right. It'll probably be the fall. It's hard to say right now. The DOT is just worried about getting the temporary bridge up and running so people can get back and forth. But they do say they will make it a top priority. All right. And you'll be following it and we'll keep us posted. It. Very yeah. good. And it's going to be at least another three weeks before another section of Highway 12 is open because the road is gone. Just look at this. About three quarters of a mile of road is completely washed away. This is just outside of Natchez, headed eastbound. Let's take a look at that. Dan Murphy with the Department of Transportation says the road has been closed since this weekend. With all of these road problems caused by flooding, it's hard to procure repair materials. So drivers expect to be diverted to westbound lanes for at least three weeks. And they also tell you to watch carefully because it could be dangerous. We're just trying to rebuild the roadway and push the, the water channel back over for, so the river can get back to where it's supposed to be and we re, re, rebuild the road. Murphy says he knows this road is quite a sight, but it's important that people just drive by. If they stop and gawk, it's dangerous and you don't want to be in their way. Of course, that is just one of a number of dangerous sites all around the county. Again, please pay attention to all the road closure signs. Our own CAP 35, Cindy Andrew, joins us live now to give us an update on the road closure situation. Cindy? Thanks, Dana. Now, I'm standing here on 16th Avenue between Atanam and Washington, and this area has been closed for several days. Not because there's water over the road. The road is basically falling apart, as you can see. Now, that's the situation on several county roads throughout Yakima County. And we're going to update you now on some of the roads that are closed and or have restrictions. Let's take a look at a map now of some of the closures. We have uh, southbound 82 is closed at the Firing Center intersection to East Sealit intersection. Now the closed roads are shown in red. The restricted roads are shown in yellow. I-82 is also closed between State Route 97 near Union Gap to Granger. State Route 22 is closed from Buena to Toppenish. Also, State Route 22 is closed between Indian Church Road to Mapton. Also, State Route 97 south of Toppenish at the Highway 22 Junction is closed. State Route 224 is closed from Junction 240 to State Route 82. State Route 241 is closed from Mile Point 6 to State Route 24, and that's closed to truck traffic only. State Route 410 is closed just west of Natchez at the Y. Now those are the latest uh, closed roads that we have right now, also restricted roads. And like we said earlier in the show, it's very important that you obey the road close signs. They've already, county officials already fear that we have one fatality from someone going around the signs. And you want to make sure that you do obey the signs and the roads just aren't safe. They're eroding away, even though they may look safe, they are not. As you can see here on 16th Avenue, this bridge is about out, and it's just not safe to travel on. So hope we got you up to date there on the road closures. Back to you, Dana. Thank you, Cindy. That's good advice because it is tempting to go look, but we really shouldn't. The Sela area. Displaced trout will die if not transported to the nearby river. Diverted traffic from the freeway through the city is also taking a toll on the Sela streets. 26,000 cars a day to probably between 75 and 100,000, plus all the large trucks off of I-82. So we had to go down to one lane so we could just express everybody from one end of town to the other to get them uh, get moved through. The SEMA mayor adds that they will need a lot of volunteers in the spring to help pitch in and get this all cleaned up. The Red Cross is expecting a rush of people tonight at the Yakima in the spring to help pitch in and get this all cleaned up. The Red Cross is expecting a rush of people tonight at the Yakima shelter, so it will remain open. But they have closed their top in a shelter now. Over the past few days, they've had a few people trickling in and out of the shelter on 40th Avenue, but they expect their biggest turnout tonight. Lynette Johnson says since this flooding began last week, they've opened three shelters and fed more than 1,500 meals to disaster workers and flood victims. We uh, planned on closing this morning, but we heard that there's 17 more in for tonight. A lot of people are coming in just for meals. You know, the first night we were open here, we had about 20 people come in during the night just 
uh, for a few hours. The Red Cross is offering cleanup kits. The kits contain a broom, mop, disinfectant, bucket, trash bags, and cleaner. If you'd like more information, call the Red Cross. The number is 457-1690. Julia Sandstrom joins us now with our weather forecast, and it was a beautiful day, and that really helps fix people's spirits up when they're looking at all that cleanup work they've got ahead. That's right. The spring-like weather, definitely good news. Finally, some good news from the weather department. <laughs> <laughs> and the weather's back on our side, helping out the cleanup efforts. The floodwaters are slowly receding, and most of our rivers should be back down below flood stage by midweek. We'll tell you all about it first. Here's a look at... Uh, Sunrise, sunset. Roundup RT is being transformed using advanced transorb technology into a new Roundup RT. A Roundup that is complete and needs no surfactants. A Roundup that is rain fast in as little as one hour. Only an advanced Roundup combines these features to give you the best value in weed control today. Introducing new Roundup Ultra RT. Technology you can count on. Having trouble getting the family to eat wheat bread? Try butter-topped home pride wheat. They'll love the soft texture and light thin crust. You'll love the nutrition. Only one gram of fat and cholesterol free. Hey, looks like you figured out how to get the family to like wheat bread. Home Pride Wheat, the taste that brings healthy bread home. Warm up on cold nights with delicious hot new winter dinner specials from DB's Family Restaurant. Choose from scrumptious beef or chicken pot pies, spaghetti and meatballs, beef...